Hello and welcome back to Football Index Moneyball. For today's pick of the day, I've collaborated with Tom from Football Index Club to try out a new guest pick theme for the videos. So Tom's going to give a quick intro to the player, then I'll finish off with my usual analysis on his stats and profit targets. If you enjoy the video and you'd like to see more guest pick videos, then please let me know in the comments below. And if you like what you see on Football Index Club and you're interested in taking a look or signing up, then please use the link in the description below to help support the channel. Before we get that's going, all we've got for you already, on today's don't pick. Forget to like, Again, comment, if you enjoyed the video, like, you comment, and subscribe. Twitter, also, if you know someone else who might like the video, and then share it with them would really help me out. There are links in the club, description for signing up to Football Index and Football Index Edge if you haven't already. There's also a link to my new Patreon page where you can get bonus content, a community message board, discussions, additional player picks, portfolio reviews, and you can also have the option of having your name featured on the monthly review video. So Tom, welcome to the channel. Thanks very much for agreeing to collaborate on the series. So before we get into the pick, do you want to do a quick background on what Football Index offers to its members? Yes, so thanks for having me on, Kevin. So first of all, there's various databases which you can use to help you search for players. So we've got Play Reviews database where you can submit your player of your choice and I'll do a review on it. A youth player database with every single player under 20 on it and you can filter it by various criteria here. And you can also click into every single player as well and gain more information on every player too. Um, so you'll see the player's key information here and their key attributes as well as the strengths, weaknesses of video as well. And then what a lot of the premium members do really enjoy about the site is the advice. And you'll have a range of blogs. So you've got market trends, there's trading advice, and also key players as well, which are highlighted on the site. Around 25 to about 50 players are usually highlighted each month. And the results have been very impressive so far, actually beating the average market growth on Football Index 2. So if we have a look here, I'll just quickly show you some of the results. So September, for example, after just 30 days, the players that were highlighted increased an average of 23.95%. October and November both saw growth of over 6.61% after just 30 days. And the results have been even better recently with December's players increasing 15.4% after just 30 days as well. So a few players that I mentioned over the last six weeks is Moussa Barrow, Jordan Henderson, Jean Kevin Augustin, amongst other players, and all three of those have increased over 100% in less than six weeks. So there's massive returns, um, and ultimately the site's here just to help you trade with as many resources as I think um, should be able to help you maximize your returns on Football Index. Um, and there's also a fixtures dashboard here as well, which has been taken from Index Edge, who we've collaborated with as well. Um, so that's about it, really. That's the main part of the site. But if anyone does have any questions about that, just uh, at me on Twitter. It's at the Index Club. So I can see you've got a lot of different ways that you find players. So for today's video, you've made a pick. If you just want to explain who the pick is and why you went for this player and what strategy you used. Yeah, so the player that we've gone for is Evan N. Dicker at Eintracht Frankfurt. Uh, he played last night and he did perform very well. So last season, he played many games and he was a centre-back. But in the last three, and three or four games, he's actually been playing left-back for Frankfurt. And he is still at quite a low price for a fullback who's playing in both the PB League and the Europa League and is only 20 as well. He did hit a high PB score of over two of 219 earlier this season as well. And playing in the Europa League, he does really suit the current market trend, which is certainly young players playing in a PB League and the Europa League or Champions League in particular. Um, so he's got a really high price ceiling as he is young. He's a France youth international. And one of the cons that I wrote about him when I highlighted him a few weeks ago was that he had a lower price ceiling as a centre-back. But now playing full-back, we may see him hit higher PB scores in the future. He put in um, one really great cross last night when I was watching the game. Um, and if he can provide more crosses down the left-hand side, then maybe we will see him post some higher PB scores and increase further in price as well. Yeah, I think another thing about him, just looking at the information you've got up there, the fact that he's playing Salzburg in the uh, Europa League, I do think that's a game that a lot of people are going to watch for the Salzburg players. So he could get some exposure there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the worry is, of course, 
Salzburg are a strong side and they've got a lot of players which people will be wanting to watch because they are a really great feeder club into some of the top European sides over the last few seasons. Obviously, Haaland being the most recent one. But yeah, I, I, I agree. I think a lot of people will be watching that game. And if MDK can impress and if Frankfurt goes through, then we'll probably see a further rise in his price, I imagine. Right, well, um, I'm going to carry on and I'll do the rest of the analysis on this player. But thanks very much for coming on. And if it gets some good feedback, then we'll try and do it again. Sounds great to me. Thanks for having me on and uh, best of luck with the rest of your videos and uh, hopefully Ndiki will improve and uh, post some high PV scores over the next few weeks and months as well. So here we've come over to Football Index to look at Ndiki's graph and you can see that his price has risen a bit since Tom made the original recommendation on his site. But if we look back into the summer, he actually peaked at 78p back in July. So this is a good sign considering the growth that Football Index and in particular youth players have seen in the same period. As with some game time, there is a good chance that there's more potential for him to grow. He actually first hit his current price back in June of 2019, so I think with the added bonus of the Europa League fixtures coming up and the potential increase that that could bring, this is looking like a very promising pick so far. So taking a look at his transfer marks, Ndika actually just got his first call up for the France under 21s in the last game that they played in November, which is a good sign. He was playing for the under 20s before that. And I think in summer that was why his price increased was the under 20 tournament. And if we look at his stats, he's played 70 games in all competitions with two goals and four assists, which averages to about 0.095 goals and assists per game, which is basically 0.1, which isn't too bad for a defender. Like the really good defenders tend to be around 0.15, 0.16. Um, and if we look at his positional stats, you can see 59 of his appearances have come at centre-back, but eight left-back as well, which is where he's currently been playing. Which, as Tom said, that can be a bonus for him if he's priced as a centre-back and he starts playing in a more advanced position and getting more crosses and potential assists and things like that. I do think that could be to his benefit. And here, I'll just take a quick look at Ndika's master stats table info on football and next edge. Um, as Tom said, he scored a 2-1-9 back in October. This was in a Europa League game though, so it has got the multiplier on it. But that's still a pretty good score. He has got some other scores over 100, and he hasn't played all that many games as a starter. His average match day scores at 49.3, but if we scroll down, we can see that all these minuses and zeros from sub-appearances and 18s for being on the bench, they all count in his average, which does affect things a bit. Now moving on to the profit target analysis, and for this pick, Tom set a time frame of summer transfer window, so roughly six months from now. As I usually set my targets as 100% return over one year time frame, I thought it was worth noting that to be on track to achieve this, you only really need to be at 40% after six months, due to the compounding effect if you take your money out and put it into another player. For my comparable players, I went for Zeno van Hoosen and Mohamed Salasou. Zeno is a Belgian centre-back who plays for Standard Liège, he was sold by Inter to Liège in summer, so for me, it's a bit of a no-brainer, as the fact that Liège are out of the European competitions and there's little incentive for them to sell Van Houten after one year means that Ndika looks a much more attractive hold for the same price. Salasu is also a centre-back playing at Real Valladolid in La Liga. Salasu has a worse goal and assist per 90 record of 0.05, but he does play more regularly than Ndika with twice the number of league minutes this season. I think this is a pretty close call, but for me the added exposure from the Europa League and the potential for a transfer due to this slightly swings it in Indica's favour, along with the 10% lower price. For my low target, I went for Per Scherzer Ajax. Now this is exactly the kind of comparison that I like to see in a player. Scherz plays the same position and is the same age, with less minutes in a non-PB league than Indica. So in reality, the idea that he's worth 20% more is a bit of a strange one but it definitely gives us a solid basis of where Indica should be sitting right now, in my opinion. For my mid-target, I went for Jean-Claire Tadebo, on loan from Barcelona to Schalke. This again is quite an interesting comparison, as Tadebo is actually one of Indica's teammates for the under-20 France team. Since then, Indica's been called up to the under-21s, as I mentioned earlier, but Tadebo is not yet. Tadebo does have a higher goal and assist per game rate of 0.16, but he's only played 55 minutes of first-team football this season. And Schalke are not in the Europa League, so for me, I would have to say that Ndik is still the better option, even if he was the same price. Then for my high target, I went for Sebastian Borno at Colm. Borno has a slightly higher goal and assist per game stat with 0.12, but 
and he has a slightly higher peak as well with 198 versus Indica's 193 after adjusting down for the European multiplier. They both have two scores over 150 and they both play in the German league. Bono's had more league game time this year, but Colin aren't in Europe, so that would go in Indica's favour. This is another comparison where I'm a little confused as to the price difference, other than the fact that the average PV score, if you were to look on one of the analysis sites, would show that Bono has the better score. When you look at the average per 90, Indica has 86 PV over the last year and Bono has 79, so even that's debatable. So this leaves us with profit target range of 19% for the low, 34% for the mid and 45% for the high. This has been an interesting pick for me as Indica is a player I've owned since before I started the YouTube channel, but I've never done any analysis on him. If I'd have used my own criteria for a pick, then I wouldn't have been able to use him as a player on the videos as I wouldn't have been able to get the 100% profit target over one year. But after reviewing the targets I used today, I can't really see a reason why with one decent PB score, Indica could be more expensive than all of them. So realistically, if he can achieve 45% in the next three months, that would be pretty incredible and would definitely have us well on track for 100% a year. And even if it takes him six months, which I don't think it will, then you're still on track with that high target. So thanks again to Tom and to Football Index Club for the pick this week. If you are interested in joining, then don't forget to use the link in the video description. And if you enjoyed the concept of having a guest picker on, then let me know because we might make this a regular thing. And there's lots of people out there who do pick players. So it'd be interesting to see if they could stand up to the analysis uh, and just see the different types of picks that people have and different ways of finding players. As there's many ways of trading and mine's definitely not the only or best one. It's just the one that I prefer to use. That's all we've got for you on today's pick. Again, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment and subscribe. Also, if you know someone else who might like the video, then sharing with them would really help me out. There are links in the description for signing up to Football Index and Football Index Edge if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out the other videos on the channel for more strategy videos and the other picks of the day. Most picks are long-term holds with depressed prices for some reason or other, so often the picks can still offer the same value, if not better, a few weeks after. And the research methods and reasoning can help if you're new to the index and want to learn to analyse your own players. Thanks for watching, good luck on the index.